Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Alhamdulillahirrabbilalamin Wassalatu wassalamu ala nabi na muhammadin Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in amabad Pemirsa Ilham TV yang dirahmati Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Dr. Sabil Ahmed dalam sebuah diskusi Yang dihadiri oleh banyak orang Kristen Amerika Menyampaikan tentang syariah Islam Menjawab pertanyaan salah satu peserta yang menanyakan tentang syariah Islam Yang selama ini memang sangat dibenci oleh orang-orang barat Dalam diskusi ini ketika Dr. Sabil Ahmed menjelaskan tentang syariah Islam Dia juga mematahkan perasaan negatif orang-orang barat tentang buruknya syariah Islam Baiklah untuk lebih jelasnya kita saksikan video berikut ini. In the beginning of your presentation, you said that the Islam faith came over to America in the 1520s, how, because the America was discovered in the 1700s. So how did they come over? The professor is shaking his head over here, right? <laughs> okay, America was discovered. All right, we know the reality that when Columbus, when he came here in 1492, um, right? In 1492, there were people already living here. So how can somebody discover something when people already are part of the native land here, right? So what I'm saying is, United States of America, by a formal country, it was formed in 1776, around that time. But Muslims came here even before that time, correct? As slaves and then later as business people and just immigrants. So going back to 1529. I hope that clarifies that. Very good. Good question. Good question. Yeah. Okay. Clap for him. Okay. <laughs> Let, let's encourage for him. Yes. Very good. Question in the back. Yes. One, two, and three. Okay. We'll come to you. Yes. Um, I was wondering who wrote your book, the Quran, I think? Who okay. Wrote who wrote? That? Who wrote the Quran? Very good, very good. Uh, so the Quran is a revelation given by God to Muhammad, peace be upon him, and he was supposed to share the revelation with his people. So uh, when he received the revelation, by God's miracle, he memorized the whole Quran. And then he used to share that with the initial Muslim followers, right? So uh, they also memorized the Quran, and that memorization was coming from that time to our time. And right now, we have about 15 million people in the whole world who memorize the whole Quran. Now, when it comes to the actual writing of the Quran, Muhammad, peace be upon him, is not the author of the Quran. We say God is the author, God is the source, and he revealed the Quran to Muhammad, peace be upon him. So Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, he did not know how to read and write. You know, many of us, we went to schools and colleges. We can read, we can write. He did not. He was not able to. But he had some scribes. So when he, whenever a revelation used to come, any passage, any chapter, he used to call the uh, scribes who used to write down for him. And then uh, he used to ask them, he used to request them, read it back to me what you wrote down, because he wanted to see exactly what they wrote down is what he said to them. So in that way, from the year 610, until the year 632, when the prophet passed away, revelation came from God and people wrote it down. So the Quran is preserved in two different ways. One would be by the memorizers, going all the way to the time of Muhammad, peace be upon him, and then by written manuscripts. So we have the written manuscripts going all the way back to the first generation, and the memorizers, the chain going back to the first generation. So in that way, if someone makes a mistake uh, in uh, writing, you know, scribes, I mean, we, we make mistakes when we write something. Maybe we get tired, maybe the lightning is not good, right, before the printing press. If they make any mistake, the memorizers will catch the mistake, correct the mistake, and that manuscript will become as pure as the first revelation, the first manuscript. So that dual, and, dual check and balance was not there for any other scripture of the past. It is there for the Quran, and that's the reason we say this is a pure, Preserved compilation guidance for humanity. Good question. Good question. So the Quran that we have, you know, just as a footnote, we don't have different versions of the Quran. We only have one version in the Arabic language. If you pick up a copy of the Quran from here, from this mosque, 
and pick up a coffee from Saudi Arabia or Australia or Europe, any country in Arabic, they would be exactly alike. Right? One version of the Quran all over the world. We have a few questions. Oh, we have a question here again. Yeah. Oh, all right. Now it's getting hot over here, all right? <laughs> what is the Sharia law? All right? What is the Sharia law? You know, when I was driving from Chicago to here, there, there are some rules that I'm supposed to obey. When I come and visit any masjid for prayer, there are some rules of the masjid, right? We have to take off the shoes. So we say Sharia is a how-to manual. It's a guidance. It's a set of rules that God has given so humanity can live in peace, harmony, and justice with each other, right? In a nutshell. But the Sharia, the word Sharia means guidance, all right? If I can just make it simple. It means guidance. But the guidance or the Sharia given by God to Muhammad, peace be upon him, was not the very first time guidance was given to humanity. You know, those from, uh, those from the Christian and the Jewish faith, I would say, the Ten Commandments was the Sharia given by God to Prophet Moses. You know, the very first commandment speaks about uh, you should only worship one God. Do not take any image, make any images of God. We say that was the Sharia guidance given by God to Moses. Do not lie, do not cheat, be good to your neighbors, respect your parents. We said that was the Sharia given by God uh, to Moses, which is still preserved there in the Old Testament. So Sharia means God's guidance, right? What comes to your mind, you know, thanks to the Fox News sometimes, that when, you, when they show the pictures or images and attach that to the Sharia, what are those images and videos that they show usually? Yes. Yeah, about chopping of hands, right? About the punishment and the chopping and, you know, beheading. Those are the images people show and they attach that to the word Sharia. You know, just like in any society, there are always a punishment system. Any civilized society have to have punishments. You know, when I travel uh, by plane, I have to go through certain metal detector, TSA, so there is always checks and balances. We have the police force, we have the US Army, we have the military. These are all for defense and protection. If anyone breaks the law, there would be some consequences. So the punishment system is less than or 1% of the Sharia guidance. You know, just like, suppose if there are aliens out there, if the aliens come here and they ask you the question, what is the state constitution of Texas, all right? If you say the constitution, it kills people by lethal injection and electrocution. So look at the question. The question is, what is the state constitution? And if I'm saying that it kills people, right? Am I doing justice to the Texas state constitution? I am not because I am leaving out all the wonderful benefits to the society. I am just mentioning one small part which is the punishment system. In the same way, within the big framework of the Sharia guidance, uh, there is a small part in there that speaks about checks and balances, consequences and punishment. So what are some of the beautiful examples of Sharia? You know, taking care of the environment according to the Quran, chapter number 6 is part of the Sharia. So being green is part of the Sharia. Unity of humanity is part of the Sharia. You know, Muhammad, peace be upon him, he said, you are not a full believer if you eat your full and your neighbors are hungry. So being good to the neighbors is part of the Sharia. Being good to our spouses and children is part of the Sharia. Uh, Muhammad, peace be upon him, he said, say something good or remain silent. All right? Look at how many marriages can be saved if you all obey that, right? <laughs> So we say that always speaking good, not backbiting or foul language or cursing and all of that, that is part of the Sharia to speak good, right? Respecting our parents is part of the Sharia. You know, just like in the Old Testament, there are always consequences, even in the Hindu scriptures, for a person who breaks the law. So what we say is that Sharia is God's guidance, right? So just a quick footnote also on the Sharia. There are so many commonalities between the Sharia guidance present in the Quran compared to also our constitution. 
Because, you know, sometimes people fear Sharia law is coming to the USA, 13 states, they ban the Sharia. But I would say there are so many commonalities. One commonality is this, there is no compulsion in faith. No one should be forced to adopt a faith. It's a choice, it's a freedom, right? Islam says that, our constitution says that. How about this? You are innocent until proven guilty. Sharia says that, the constitution says that. Uh, Sharia says that all humans are equal despite what race that you have. Sharia, our constitution says the same. Uh, our constitution says that equal pay for equal, uh, equal work. Sharia says that, our constitution says that, right? So there are so many commonalities and there are always people Sometimes they abuse certain passages of the Vedas, or the Bible, or the Quran, or Jihad, or Sharia. If they misuse certain concepts and certain, certain passages, we blame them and not Sharia, Jihad, Quran, or Islam. So in a nutshell, that is what Sharia is. Good. Question from Good. somewhere up there. Itulah tadi presentasi yang sangat menarik dari Dr. Sabil Ahmed dan beberapa penanya yang tampaknya mereka sangat antusias ingin mengetahui tentang syariah Islam, mengetahui tentang ajaran Islam dan dijawab dengan sangat lugas oleh Dr. Sabil Ahmed. Semoga kita yang menyaksikan mendapatkan manfaat dari video ini dari diskusi ini dan mudah-mudahan akan semakin mengokohkan keimanan kita sebagai seorang muslim amin sampai di sini dulu perjumpaan kita jangan lupa untuk klik like, share, dan subscribe channel Islam TV semoga anda senantiasa dalam keadaan sehat walafiat dan semoga Allah meridui kita semuanya amin sampai jumpa pada video berikutnya wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh